A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord God, cry out full-throated and unsparingly, lift up your voice like a trumpet blast. Tell my people their wickedness and the house of Jacob their sins. They seek me day after day and desire to know my ways, like a nation that has done what is just and not abandoned the law of their God. They ask me to declare what is due them, pleased to gain access to God. Why do we fast and you do not see it, afflict ourselves and you take no note of it? Lo, on your fast day you carry out your own pursuits and drive all your laborers. Yes, your fast ends in quarreling and fighting, striking with wicked claw. Would that today you might fast as to make your voice heard on high. This is the manner of fasting I wish, of keeping a day of penance, that a man bow his head like a reed and lie in sackcloth and ashes. Do you call this a fast, a day acceptable to the Lord? This, rather, is the fasting that I wish, releasing those bound unjustly, untying the thongs of the yoke, setting free the oppressed, breaking every yoke, sharing your bread with the hungry, sheltering the oppressed and the homeless, clothing the naked when you see them and not turning your back on your own. Then your light shall break forth like the dawn and your wound shall be quickly healed. Your vindication shall go before you and the glory of the Lord shall be your rear guard. Then you shall call and the Lord will answer. You shall cry for help and he will say, here I am. The word of the Lord. A heart contrite and humble, O God, you will not spurn. A heart contrite and humbled, O God, you will not spurn. Have mercy on me, O God, in your goodness. In the greatness of your compassion, wipe out my offense. Thoroughly wash me from my guilt, and of my sin, cleanse me. A heart contrite and humbled, O God, you will not spurn. For I acknowledge my offense, and my sin is before me always. Against you only have I sinned, and done what is evil in your sight. A heart contrite and humbled, O God, you will not spurn. For you are not pleased with sacrifices. Should I offer a burnt offering, you would not accept it. My sacrifice, O God, is a contrite spirit. A heart contrite and humbled, O God, you will not spurn. A heart contrite and humbled, O God, you will not spurn. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. Seek good and not evil so that you may live, and the Lord will be with you. Praise to you. King of endless glory, the Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. The disciples of John approached Jesus and said, Why do we and the Pharisees fast much? But your disciples do not fast. And Jesus answered them, Can a wedding guests mourn as long as the bridegroom is with them? 
The days will come when the bridegroom is, a take, is taken away from them, and then they will fast. The Gospel of the Lord. Brothers and sisters, it's amazing what Lent has as a treasury for us in our journey towards the Lord. Uh, when it was about to happen, Ash Wednesday, I had an adverse resistance because the memory popped of what Lent was like when I was a kid, where you did serious fasting back in the day, right? You had to cut your left finger off. No. Um, but there was no meat on Wednesdays and Fridays. We had to actually fast just water and a little bread. This is French Canadian Catholicism. There's creeping Jansenism, I think, in there. That was a theological joke. For those of you who don't get it, don't worry about it. And uh, uh, we had to do a rosary every Friday, a uh, family rosary. And I didn't like it. I didn't like denying myself. And that was my kind of basic experience of Lent. And of course, that pops up in my memory uh, on Ash Wednesday and just before. But I saw something different this year, um, thinking about how wonderful and joyful Christmas was, not because of the, the music or the decorations, but this memory we have as a church of the Son of God uncreated, assuming human flesh in Mary. Amazing stunner, brain freeze level, can't get it all in. And the joy and expectation and excitement that we were going, he's going to be with us close, not only close, but sharing our humanity, sharing our human story, sharing our human devastations. He was made like sin for our sake, it says. Lent is the fruition of that incarnation. It's Advent, Christmas, boom, he's here. Ordinary time, here's what he said, here's what he did. <coughs> Beg your pardon. And now, the fruition of the incarnation, we begin to follow Jesus' life more closely in, in a more concentrated way, not three years, but just a little bit. <coughs> the end of his life, the big part of the story. And where does fasting fit in on that? Well, fasting, I can perpetuate my memory and, and be, you know, it says don't show anybody when you're suffering or fasting. You know, comb your hair, wash your hair, wash your face, and, you know, yeah. But maybe fasting is a, 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 a doorway to the joy of Jesus' life, which is to save us from our sins. Does the Lord want us to have joy during this Lent? His joy, not made up joy, not generated joy, but ungenerated joy. Does he want to give us that gift through fasting, through any kind of ascetical act? It seems to me it's reasonable to propose that. When that happens, then we see the corrective of Psalm 51 here, that corrects, the, that is the corrective to the, to the sins of ancient Israel. They would do the rites. They would have access to God in the temple and they would fast. Then on a fast day, they'd misbehave. They'd abuse their, their servants, their slaves, their employees. They would argue and fight. And the imagery here is pretty violent graphic image about something like, you know, this kind of thing, sticking with wicked claw. I don't want to meditate on what that means. Wicked claw, ouch. Yeah, 51 says, have mercy on me, O Lord. I want to have my fasting and my liturgical practices flow out so that I treat people like you treat them. That's the challenge of fasting and abstinence in Lent. That's the challenge of self-denial, not for the sake of self-denial, 
but for the sake that this thing will not block me a little bit less, let's say, will block me, but maybe a little less, or maybe completely delivered in my movement towards the Lord, which is paradoxically his movement to be closer and closer to us. We do something, and God does something that made us do that something, that, that prompted us to do that something. So it's God moving us when we, and getting close to us when we do these practices. So it's worth pondering on that, worth thinking about. Where am I going with my life? And how does this fasting and, and, and almsgiving and, and care for others, is that increasing? And is my joy of living just a little bit better? The joy, ungenerated joy, just that I exist and I'm aware of it, and it's because of God's will that I am sustained. And that he's coming close to me. In fact, he's very close to me. And today he's going to be really close. We're going to hear him. We're going to generate faith. And we're going to receive him in the Eucharist. That's closeness. And that's what's going to compel us out there to treat people who are kind to us with kindness and people who are nasty, really nasty, to treat them with kindness. That'd be a good Lent. If we have one event where we do that, Lent is a winner, ding, you get a gold star. So let's see if the Lord has something for us in this joy of penance, this joy of reforming our life, which is outside, moving us outside ourselves to the Lord, this exercise of the theological virtue of hope, turning to the Lord with an assurance of his desire and act to save us. May Jesus Christ be praised.